Okay, hello everyone. I'm just going to go through a type, type of uh, differential equations that you might see, uh, especially on the AP exam, if they are going to include this. This is in Unit 7, so this is the last unit that they are including. We talked about uh, slope, cur um, slope fields already, and then to solve slope fields into general equations, and then to particular solutions, particular equation, particular um, solutions. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to go through a couple of types of problems. Uh, these are kind of very popular on there. And I'm just going to go through the work and um, in case I run out of time in class today. All right. So the goal is to solve for y. So find for that particular solution. So we're going to have to what we call separate. So we want the x's on one side and the y's on one side. X's on one side and y's on the other. So dy is already on top here. That's why we leave the y's on the left. And we can move the dx to the right. So to move the variables around, we have dy. Move the y over over y is equal to 6x squared dx, okay? This is our point. Our x and y point is negative 3, and our y point is negative 2 over e to the 54, whatever that may be. Now, our goal is to get our original y equation. y is equal to something. What is it? And we're not given that. We're given a dy. So to go backwards, we're now going to take the integral to both sides, integral both sides, integrate. See, both sides have their own respective dy and dx. And when I integrate 1 over y, that's natural log of y. But remember, natural log of the absolute value of y is equal to um, the integral of this would be 6x cubed over 3 plus c. Okay, so that's our first initial c. Now, from this point here, we're going to have to go ahead and solve for our y. See, our goal is to get y. Um, so to do that, we're going to do a special move here, and we need to get out y. See how y is kind of buried here? Oops, y is kind of buried here. We have to get that out. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of the natural log by taking the e to both sides. Now here is the trick. This is all as an exponent, so please be aware of that. This is all an exponent. So we're going to rewrite this as absolute value of y is equal to e with everything on top, 6x cubed over 3. Well, that's going to simplify, I'm sorry. That's going to simplify to just to become 2. And plus C. Now, we're going to have to rewrite this mess here. And here's a gimmick. 3 squared plus 5 can be rewritten as multiplying um, multiplying powers. So it's multiplying, sorry, yeah, multiplying powers. 3 squared times 3 to the fifth. You guys remember that? You can always separate them into multiplication. And that's what we're going to do here. We're going to say Y is equal to, in this case, um, e to the 2x cubed, and we're going to multiply this by e to the c power. Again, this addition becomes a multiplication, e to the 2x cubed, e to the c, multiplication. And we're going to rewrite that in the front. Now, one of the gimmicks that, that we do for this type of question is that we just call that a new type of c. We're going to call that c1 which is the reason why we call it C1, because C1 is not the same as C. So just to make that distinction, so in case we go back and we start plugging C everywhere, we're only plugging into C1. Now, absolute value of Y is equal to E to the 2X cubed. Now, the big deal about this next part is the absolute value. How do I get rid of an absolute value? And if you remember from Algebra 1, in Algebra 1 we say, hey, we get rid of an absolute value. Let's say this is equal to 4, make this up. This could be y is equal to 4, or negative y is equal to 4. And it's all about depending what y is. If y is a positive value, we can use this guy here, because it wouldn't matter. If I say y is positive 3, you need an absolute value or don't need it. It doesn't matter. But what if y was negative 3? Then we would use this negative version. If I plug in negative 3 here, the negative and negative would force each other to be a positive. So the gimmick here is that we always have two versions for absolute values. You always have to write two. But we can make a smart decision. Looking at our initial y value, let's go back here, initial y value, is our y value going to be positive or negative? It looks like it's going to be negative, right? So our y value is going to be negative. So since it's a negative, we have to use our negative y version. So negative y is equal to c1 um, c1 e to the negative uh, 2x cubed. A lot of people will always do this problem in a slightly different way also, saying that c1 could be positive or negative, 
So we actually don't have to write the negative, but I'm going to do that right now just to make sure we cover all our bases. And then let's go ahead and plug in now our x and y. We said our x value here was negative 3. And our y value was negative 2 over e to the 54. Okay. So as we plug in this value, it will be negative, negative 2 over e to the 54 is equal to c1 e to the multiple. Uh, plug in the negative 3, negative 3 here, so it'll be 2, negative 3 cubed. Negative 3 cubed is um, 2 times, 2 times, sorry, 3 times 3 is 9, 9 times 3 is 27, 27 times 2 is 54, and you can see that's a negative, so giving myself some space here. space here. This is going to be a positive 2 over e to the 54 equals to c1 1 over e to the 54. So what does c have to be to make these guys look alike? Well you can multiply these across and the e to the 54 is cancel out. Right? Then we write that you guys need, need me to write that. e to the 54 e to the 54 those guys cancel out. And we're left with C1 is equal to positive 2. Double check our answer. C1 is positive 2. Now, if I want to rewrite this answer in a uh, to answer our question, what is the y value? We go in and write y is equal to, from this answer over here, negative y is equal to 2 e to the 2x cubed moving the negative over y is equal to negative 2 e to the 2x cubed the biggest deal is remembering your steps from pre-calc the only calculus move is right here that's the only calculus move everything else is from pre-calc all these moves here are from pre-calc okay so let's go ahead and look at our next problem here Next problem looks quite terrible, but it's going to follow the similar steps. We go ahead and separate our x's and y's. So it'll be uh, dy over y is equal to 2x dx over x squared plus 2. I'm thinking this might be u substitution. If u is equal to x squared plus 2, du is equal to um, 2x, which gets rid of this 2x here. So that's going to be u sub for us. So it will be dy over y is equal to um, 1 over u du because our u substitution allows us to say 2x over u and then dx becomes, sorry, dx over 2x, those divide out. And then we can take the integral of this guy, it will be a natural log of y, absolute value of y is equal to natural log of absolute value of u rewriting this uh, plus plus C we're gonna go ahead and change our u value back to our uh, x value natural log of y absolute value of y is absolute value of x squared plus 2 plus C so our natural log to get rid of that natural log we're gonna have to before we can even touch the absolute value we're gonna go ahead and get rid of the abs uh, the Natural log by e in both sides. E both sides. So absolute value of y is equal to e to the natural log of x squared plus 2 plus c. Like this c plus c like we did before, we're going to rewrite that as a product of powers. e to the c. Natural log. Sorry. e to the natural log absolute value of x squared plus 2. Now, we said this could be positive or negative. Y is going to be a negative here, so we have to fake it. So negative Y is equal to um, e to the C, e to the natural log of x squared plus 2. Again, why did I put that negative there? Is because the Y value is negative 3 here, and I'm going to plug in that negative 3 in just a moment, and I'll make sure that becomes positive. From this step here, I'm going to go ahead and simplify just a little bit. The, right here, the e to the ln 
We know those two are inverses of each other, so that's going to cancel out, leaving me just the absolute value. Negative y is equal to e to the c. Well, let's change e to what we called the constant before. Call that c1. Um, absolute value of x squared plus 2. Natural log e canceled out. And we can go ahead and plug in our x and y value right now. And x and y value we said before was 1, negative 3. We wrote it right here, 1, negative 3. Um, y is negative 3, so negative y and negative 3 become a positive 3 like we were hoping for. Like back here, we were hoping that was going to be positive. Is equal to c1, we can plug in the 1 here. 1 squared is 1, 1 plus 2 is 3. After the value of 3 is just 3. So if we divide 3 to both sides, c1 is equal to 1. Now let's make sure we go back and write this equation. y is equal to... Uh, so negative y is equal to 1. I'm not going to write that anymore. Absolute value of x squared plus 2. If we uh, solve for y, y is equal to negative absolute value of x squared plus 2. Let's see if we plug in our x and our, do we get our negative 3. If I say x is 1, 1 squared is 1 plus 2 is 3. Absolute value of 3 is 3. And we end up with negative 3 is equal to y negative 3. Oops. And we're good. Right. Okay. So the problems as we go through them, they always almost have the same type of uh, formula. So y dy over dx is equal to y equals to 1. y minus 1, I'm sorry. We separate it. dy over y minus 1 is equal to dx 1. I mean, natural log of absolute value of y minus 1 is equal to uh, x plus c. We take the e to both sides. Absolute value of y minus 1 is equal to e to the x plus c. We can rewrite that to become absolute value of y minus 1 is equal to, uh, right here is going to be e to the c times e to the x. We can call that just c1 times e to the x. If you want, we can look at the our y value here. It's going to be positive. Um, 2.7 dash. It's going to be negative, actually. So one thing that they oftentimes do is they don't call a negative. They just let the negative fall where the c1 will be. What I mean is, since c1 is some, con some constant, we don't know it's a plus or minus. So you can actually leave it as, uh, we don't know until we solve for it. And oftentimes you'll see that because they do this method, they go ahead and just write y minus 1 regardless if it's plus or minus. And they'll just call c1 uh, times um, e to the x. So from here, um, I'm going to go ahead and plug in our x and y. Our x and y we said was um, negative 1 and e to the oh, e minus 3 over e. I mean, it sounds, looks pretty tricky, but we're just going to plug in and work it out. So plugging in our y, which is e minus 3 over e, minus 1 is equal to c1 e to the negative 1 power. I'm going to simplify this first to become, dividing by e, be 1 minus 3 over e minus 1 equals e1, I'm sorry, c1, c1, and then 1 over e. Rewriting that to the denominator. We see on the left side the 1, the 1 and the minus 1 uh, subtract out. So we're left with just negative 3 over e is equal to c1, 1 over e. You can multiply the e to both sides. Those divide out. So c1 is equal to uh, negative 3. Now, making sure we go back and write our y is equal to equation, answering the question. Um, so y minus 1 is equal to negative 3 e to the x. Don't forget to solve for y. Plus 1 to both sides. y is equal to negative 3 e to the x plus 1. And that's our answer. We can verify this by plugging in um, negative 1 to x. If I plug in negative 1 to x, that puts x on the denominator, and we end up with negative 3 over e plus 1. Common denominator is e. Negative 3 plus e all over e, which is our answer. That's e, sorry.